everybody. Hey, 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 hey. I'm going to give you a little time to catch up. This is, here we go. This is Cooking with Liz. You know my slogan, peace and sauce. Peace and sauce, that's what it's all about for me during, um, during the current unpleasantness. So I got a whole new sauce uh, I'm going to learn today. It's the red wine and shallot sauce. Uh, but let me start from the beginning. So this is the premiere episode of the main dish for, this is, remember, I'm doing a special Cooking with Liz holiday season. And on the holiday season, it's just four episodes. Doing one appetizer. I already did that. Martha Stewart stuffed mushrooms. They were delish. You can look that up. Now I'm doing the main dish, which is Chateaubriand. More on that later. Next week, Leon suggested I learn how to make scalloped potatoes. So I'm doing that. And then the final week, which is the weekend after Thanksgiving, I will be making a dessert that I will pick from the suggestions you've made here in the Satellite Sisters group. So remember, the concept here in the holiday season is four weeks, one special meal. So you've got your appetizer, you've got your main, you've got your side, and you've got your dessert. So as I said, today, it's time for the main. This is what Leon called, okay? Like, Leon's a pro. She calls, calls this a high-stakes meal. Not because it's hard to make, but because it's expensive. So if you blow it, you're not going to feel very good about yourself. Um, so let me go, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, so the whole deal here is the um, Chateaubriand. I didn't even know what that was. Do you, do you even know? I didn't know. I mean, I knew it was beef, but when I see it on a menu, I never order it because it's always for two and I hate sharing food. <laughs> I, I really don't enjoy sharing meals with, like sharing my actual food with other people, especially during the current unpleasantness. Why would you order something for two? Anyway, what Chateaubriand is, is really tenderloin of beef with a red wine shallot sauce. Now it has to be cooked in a special way. And if you looked at my special bonus episode on Thursday, satellite Mr. Ian Punnett explained to me how to cook it. So that's what you're gonna see me do today. Um, and uh, so today I'm gonna brown it, put it in the oven to roast, and then if we have enough time, make the sauce. Cause you know, I'm all about the sauce. So uh, I did a little mise en place before you got here. Cause you know, things are gonna happen fast here today. So I want to show you what I already did. Let me move my Tower of Fat Fit Fun boxes over here. Okay, so here you see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So here you see what I got going on. So if you look at the ingredients, I have the one pound beef tenderloin. This piece is actually a little bit less than that, but this is my test batch, remember? I'm going to make another one tomorrow if this one doesn't pan out. Uh, so got the the beef tenderloin, um, salt. I had this in the Spice Museum, so I thought, well, why not? I don't, I can't really taste the difference between salts, but I own it. Why not try it? So I did that. Uh, then black pepper to taste. You know, we love Thrive Market on Satellite Sisters. It's one of our sponsors, actually. But even if they weren't a sponsor, this is Thrive Market is great. You should check it out. Uh, Three tablespoons unsalted butter. That's what you see here. So this is two tablespoons and this is one because they're going two different places. Uh, olive oil. I already put the olive oil in here. Uh, let's see. One medium shallot, finely chopped. Okay, here we go. Um, you know, I my knife skills have, you know, really dramatically improved. First of all, my knives have improved. I'm not sure the fine chop is really as neat as, you know, the standard, uh, but it's finer than I used to do. And as you know, it's all about the learning here. So I think this is better than it would have been six months ago. So progress. Uh, okay, a half a cup dry, it says dry red wine, um, medium bodied. So I don't really know what that means. Uh, medium bodied and dry, it's, that's a lot of, especially because I thought, well, I should use French wine because it is Chateau Briand. So I just thought, what does that mean? Dry red wine, medium bodied. For me, that says cheap Bordeaux. 
That's what that says. I translated that into the French. The French is cheap Bordeaux. So here's what I bought. I bought a bottle of Esprit de Pave. I mean, who doesn't like the word Esprit? We could all use a little Esprit. Esprit felt like a little pep talk, right? So this is basically cheap Bordeaux. That's what I'm going with. Uh, and then what do we have here? Uh, half a cup demi gloss. Now, I explained this yes the other day when I was talking to Ian. So here's what that looks like. So this is basically a sauce in sauce situation because I consider this a sauce, even though it's it says a classic French style reduction of organic beef stock, vegetables, and seasonings. So this goes in the shallot sauce to thicken it. But this is like one kind of anyway. It's a sauce and sauce situation. So at first I thought I was going to have to make this and that was way, there was no chance I was going to make it. And then I realized at the Williams Sonoma, Sonoma two blocks from me, they sell this. So I, I nipped in there, as my father would say. Jim Dolan would say, well, I just nipped in and got that. So I nipped in and got the, uh, the demi-gloss at, um, uh, at Williams Sonoma. But here's what that looks like. So I already put it, this is one of the, um, the measuring cups that um, Satellite Sister Accountant and uh, Procurement Director Diane Gray actually gave me because early in the season she had some spares and she could see I didn't have any. So, but look at this, very thick, this demi glass. Not at all what I expected. I had no idea what it was. So I got that ready to go. And then what else? The demi glass. And then one tablespoon fresh tarragon. Here we go, fresh tarragon chopped. And um, I gotta say, for me, an area of great personal growth has been going with the fresh herbs is really nice. You know, otherwise I end up with the spice museum full of stuff that's gonna be in there for years. The fresh herbs, I know you don't use all of them and then they go bad, but I went fresh, even though obviously I could have bought a jar. So, so that's the idea. So that's really everything, and this isn't that hard. So first step is gather the ingredients, as you can see, check. Um, Preheat oven to 375, did I do that? I just did that right as I was going live with you, so, so that's good. Um, evenly season the beef with salt and pepper. Okay, here we go, back to the beef. I already did that because that's I showed you the salt and pepper. So I wanted to do that before you got here. Melt tablespoons of butter with the olive oil. Okay, so now the cooking starts, people, because now I'm melting. Uh, so I'm going to, okay. Melt two tablespoons of butter with the olive oil in a large skillet, preferably cast iron. Well, as you know, if you watched my bonus um, preview, I did, I did invest in a cast iron uh, pan. I have never had one before. Everything I have is stainless steel. You know, seemed like a good good opportunity to get crate and barrel on the blower, but they couldn't even get it to me in time. So I had to do like a drive through in a local crate and barrel store where they like threw it into my car as I drove by. Cause there's no contact people, but there's no, I'm not making any contact. And you know, I really try to limit the number of stores I go to. So anyway, the crate and barrel covered me. So here's what we're doing now. So let's see the best camera angle for this. Because now we're going to start. I'm going to put this in here. So the idea is we get this all melted in here. And then I have to brown the beef on all of the sides, which is the, the top and the bottom. And then it's kind of thick. So the sides too. Now Ian said two minutes is enough. So you know, the recipe says three minutes, whatever. I know I'm supposed to use my judgment, but as you know, I haven't really developed any judgment yet. So I'm just going to go with like timing it two minutes, because as he said to me, you can overbrown, but you can't underbrown. Like once you've overbrowned, there's no going back. And I, I don't want to make that mistake. So, okay. So here we go. I'm melting the butter, you know, even though this is high stakes, I'm going to try to take my time today and just do it right because things could go wrong at any moment. The last thing you want to do on a fancy expensive piece of beef is, is overcook it. So, okay. So is that a good angle? Are you guys getting that? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. There. Okay. So 
Okay, let's see. It says that until cloudy and bubbly. So it's bubbly. And it's just about getting cloudy. So place the seasoned meat in the pan and brown without moving the meat. That seems like a key instruction because the temptation, of course, is to just keep poking it and flipping it. No. So, okay, it looks like we're ready to go. I got this, got the tongs. Here we go. This is dramatic. Okay, so I'm just going to put the bottom down. Okay. And I'm going to start the timer for two minutes. Okay. Ooh, can you hear the sizzling? Oh, one of my stickies just fell down. I don't know. When, that, when the high stakes sticky falls into the food, is that a bad sign? I don't know. I'll put that over here. Oh, I also wanted to mention this, as long as we're browning. When Ian talked me through everything the other day, he kept saying, this is so easy, so easy. But, you know... Maybe for you, he doesn't even work from recipes, so you know, it's not my deal. But just talking through it, he gave me a lot of confidence. So I'm feeling like a key ingredient to Chateaubriand is confidence, because it's not hard. Uh, in fact, it's almost too easy to, you know, you're just browning it and roasting it and then making a sauce. So, I mean, whoever thought I would say the words too easy, because, you know, uh, anyway. So thank you, Ian Punnett, for the confidence. And also, this isn't just a regular old roast. I'm really kind of elevating here. I picked this because it's a real holiday meal, right? That was the idea. So, okay. Now, as you can see, I'm totally not touching it, but it's incredibly hard to not touch it. Wouldn't you be tempted to just jump in there now with your tongs and just move it around a little bit? Totally not doing that. So, okay, I'm just gonna scroll down here, tell you about the cast iron pan. Okay, Marsha, well, this is just one of the classics. Normally I'm a Le Creuset girl. You know, I have like a Dutch oven that's Le Creuset, but this is that other brand that you always see. I think it's pronounced Staub, S-T-A-U-B. Um, and I don't know, it was on sale at Crate and Barrel, actually, and, uh, and I liked the color, you'll notice, I didn't do this on purpose, shirt coordinated with the color of the new cast iron pan. So, okay, there we go. Time to turn it to the other side. Two minutes is up. Okay, so can you see it's a little bit round? You know, maybe it should be three minutes. I'm gonna try for three minutes on this side because remember, this is a test batch. And um, so why not experiment a little bit? No overcooking, but okay, so. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I set the timer again. Let's see. Uh, Cheryl wants to know how long does salt last in a pantry? I don't know, isn't salt one of those things? That's what like, early explorers used for everything. I feel like salt lasts forever, but I have no idea. Um, it seems like if there's anything that would last forever, it would be salt, which is used to preserve things, but not my area of expertise at all. Okay, so, wow, can you, you hear that sizzling? Now remember all of this stuff in the pan as soon as I'm done with this and put it in the oven to roast, then I make the sauce right in the pan. And again, Ian says that's super e easy. It's just shallots and red wine and then a little bit of tarragon at the end. So I'm hoping we can get through all of that today. So today you won't see the meat come out of the oven, but you will see it go in and you will see me make the sauce. Kathleen says the sizzling is phenomenal. I know. Good. I'm glad you can hear it. So... We have at least another minute. Um, so let's see, what else did I learn here? Um, you know, okay, I'm wearing, did I show you this yet? I'm wearing my I'm an eyeballer apron because, you know, I'm an eyeballer, but also because this is not a dish that really requires a lot of fussy measurement. I mean, 
you can see the ingredients. That was not hard. So this, I think, is an eyeballer-friendly kind of meal. Though, at the same time, high stakes. Okay, so the buzzer's going off, and that means that's two minutes. So guess what I'm going to do? Because we agreed we would see if three minutes looks different. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a little bit more time. And then I have to flip it to the side because you can see this here. So you have to brown that too. It's just not a top and bottom situation. It is all the way around. Um, so Anne, you were about to ask, what about the sauces? So I think you're going to get to see me make the sauce today because that also sounds super quick. But, you know. I don't know, I have this artificial thing in my head that that an episode shouldn't be too long, but it doesn't matter. Cheryl says, I need a silicone spatula. I know. You know what, Cheryl? I was thinking exactly the same thing. Because when I make the sauce, it's going to be a lot of, like, in the pan. And you know what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Betty, but it's probably not the best thing. A silicone spatula or even a wooden spoon or one of those scraper things, probably would be the way to go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now, okay, now we've done that side. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So look at that. Yeah, I think three minutes was the way to go. Okay, so now I'm doing this side. More super sizzling. Um, yeah, silicone spatula, I don't know. I know I need one. I don't know why I resist. I, I don't loyalty to the Betty, maybe? Maybe. And for those of you who weren't here last week, you may have missed the revelation that my college roommate found this in her kitchen. What I'm calling the double Betty. She actually had Betty Crocker salad tongs somehow in her kitchen. So she thought... She thought they belonged in my kitchen, so I'm very happy to have these. Thanks again, Adrian. Okay. Oh, got to set the timer again. Okay. So, so the thing with this meal, it definitely is a holiday meal. As I mentioned, you don't want to mess around with this with this fancy meat. So I think that's also very COVID friendly too, because you only want to serve a couple of people with this. Otherwise, it's going to break the bank, right? So your pod is small. This could be the perfect year if you only have like two people for a holiday dinner because we're not inviting anyone in, right? We're not. Um, it is, somebody the other day asked me how much it actually costs. They don't mess around with this stuff. I think it was, here we go. Yeah, this is $29 a pound. So, oh, post-it notes falling everywhere. You're right. Sorry, Cheryl. Um, yeah, so basically at 29 bucks a pound, which for me, I thought, okay, that's a little bit more. Sometimes when I really splurge on the wild salmon from Alaska, like the big cake salmon, that's about that price too. But I'm normally only feeding one, maybe two people. Um, I would say the same with this. Uh, okay, so we got another minute here. Ooh, I'm just going to stand up straight because it's killing me to lean over and talk to you. But you can hear the sizzling, right? So so now we've done the top and the bottom and one side. We'll do the other side, but the other side is not flat. So I'm not sure how that's going to hold up. But you can see over here, see I have the roasting pan all ready to go. Some of you may remember when I bought this. That was one of my first big... Um, unboxings because it was when I was doing Anna Garten's roast chicken that I realized I needed a, I didn't own a roasting pan. So here it is at the ready now that I own it that's going to be ready to go. Ooh, again, why am I leaning over? Um, okay. <laughs> so this demi glass again. Oh, okay. Hang on. Hang on. I think we're all right. Let's see. Oh, wow, that really browns now. So that actually looks perfect. Now, hang on. This fourth side. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now because, whoops, okay, two minutes. Because look at how deliciously brown that looks. 
without being overdone. So we've got two minutes, and then this is gonna go in the roasting pan. This goes in the oven for 15 minutes, and while that's happening, it's sauce time. Uh, now, according to the recipe, I'm supposed to roast the, um, roast the meat, take it out, and then make the sauce. But because of production requirements here at Cooking with Liz, that's just, it's too long. It takes too many steps. You don't want to wait that long while we're just standing around roasting. So that's why I'm going to go right into sauce making if I can. Okay. All right. Getting ready. So I'm just going to read this out loud one more time so that we can all agree I'm doing the right thing. Taste, blah, 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 blah. Transfer the tenderloin to a rack placed in a roasting pan and transfer to the oven. Set the skillet aside for making the sauce. Okay. Roast beef to your desired doneness about 15 minutes for medium rare. So that's me. Totally medium rare. Not a moment longer. And then you have to let it rest and you put a little tent over it. I don't think you'll be here for all of that. I think I might do that when we're all done. So, okay. So... You see, I was just tempted to, like, just move it around a little bit. Um, but you have to stop yourself. It says don't do that. Okay, Cheryl looked up the life of salt. It's five years. Okay. All right. Yeah. It smells delicious. You know, at some point we'll have smell a vision here, I'm sure. I'm sure Facebook is working on that. Uh, okay. Almost ready. And then I can. Oh, here we go. Okay. So now this will be dramatic. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, look. Very nicely brown there, too, I'd say. I don't know how well you can see that, but look at that. That's one good looking hunk of beef. So I'm just going to put this here, right here. Okay. Now, hang on, hang on. Don't want to burn anything, including me. So, I have these nice oven mitts. Remember, I bought these. So I'm moving that over here. I'm moving this this way. Okay, you want to get a good look at that? So that's what that looks like now. I need to move the camera. Otherwise, I won't be able to get the oven open. So here we go. I'm going to open this. I'm putting this. Okay. So that is heated to 375. Okay. High stakes. No kidding. It does look amazing, doesn't it, Natalie? Whew, I feel like I need to take a little shot of that cheap Bordeaux. <laughs> cheap Bordeaux. That's. Okay, so now I'm going to set the timer to 15 minutes because, as we said, that's key. Okay, so now we're going to make the sauce, which does sound like the easiest thing ever. So I think we're about to see that. Let's, let's review the instructions. <sighs> okay, so... When the tenderloin is resting, make the wine sauce. Okay, tenderloin's not resting. Just forget you heard that. Combine the shallot with the juices in the skillet. Saute over medium heat until the shallot is soft and translucent. Then we pour the wine in. Okay, so let's start with that. We're going to start with... Okay, here are my... Not very finely chopped uh, shallots. Okay, can you hear that sizzling? So it's still pretty hot here. I mean, one of the reasons Ian kept recommending this, because we texted a lot, he's my main man about picking the main, what should I make? And he just said, this is so much easier than you think and so delicious because of the specific steps to cook it. Okay, so blah, 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 until the shallot is soft and translucent. 
Pour the wine into the skillet and bring the sauce to a boil, scraping up the brown bits. See, I think it's the brown bits that are the key to the unique flavor of Chateaubriand. So what do you think? Does this look translucent? Oh my God, that smells so good again. Okay, we're going with the wine. So here is, this is half a cup of cheap Bordeaux. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you're getting the right angle here on that. Let's try to do this a little bit more. Okay. Pour the wine into the skillet, bring it to a boil, scraping up the brown bits. Okay. So. And it says, bring it to a boil and let it reduce by half. So that's an eyeballing situation. Because how do you know what half really is? But, you know, eyeballing. Um, okay, continue boiling the sauce. So that's what we're doing here now. Well, it might help if I put some heat under it. That's the thing I didn't do. I think you have to turn on the heat <laughs> under the pan. So where did it say that? Did I miss that instruction? <sighs> yeah, over medium heat. Yeah, I... Okay, luckily it was already medium heat because I skipped the whole step of resting. Oh, wow. Can I don't know if you can see how pretty that looks, like the red wine makes it look. I mean, this looks restaurant quality people here. I, you know, I don't want to give myself too much credit yet because this is not the hard part. It's getting the meat right that's the hard part. But okay, so continue boiling the sauce until it reduces by half. Then we add the demi-glace to the sauce and continue boiling until the mixture is slightly thickened. Okay, so, oh my God, that smells so good. Well, anytime you cook red wine, <laughs> it just smells delicious. Hang on. Okay, all right. Wow, 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 wow. It's, I don't know how I'm gonna make the call when it's reduced by half, but oh well. So. Okay, so here's the demi gloss again. So basically, this is beef stock, vegetables, and seasonings. And when I looked at the recipe, like if I wanted to make this myself, it was just way too complicated. It involved making a little sachet of cheesecloth with spices in it. Like, I'm, you know, I'm into elevating. Oh, that's confidence. Yeah, I, I didn't have the confidence, or I had no interest in doing that. Yeah, I could have done that, but why would I bother to do that? when okay all right so okay so it's really boiling now reducing by half i'm just gonna make the call i think when when i get bored i don't know um okay Oh, you won't be surprised to know that my sous chef is here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's waiting for something good to fall on the floor. You know, he's got the nose for fine French cuisine. Okay. I actually think we're pretty close to me calling it that we're halfway. Uh, so again, I read the instructions a thousand times. Uh, add the demi gloss to the sauce and continue boiling the mixture until slightly thickened. Okay, so this is, remember I had already put this in here. So here we go, we're gonna do this. This stuff, it's like a, it's like a fudge sauce consistency, but I'll take their word for it that it's beef stock. Again, I know I'm not supposed to be using a metal spoon, so I got you there. All right, so here we go. I'm going to scrape this off. All right, so now... Okay, can you see what I'm doing here? So this seems pretty easy. So let me just mix this all in. Again, smells even more delicious. Okay. 
This is like a beef stock roux, kind of. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Let that cook for a second and just refresh my memory. Continue boiling the mixture until slightly thickened. Okay. All right. That's what's happening here. I can kind of relax now. How much? And the meat's going to be done in nine minutes. Let me see if I can get you a, like a little bit more of a close up on that. Can you see that? I mean, I know my laptop camera. It's not exactly Food Network quality uh, camera work, but take my word for it. It smells delicious. Looks pretty good. Now it's boiling. It's thickening. I think we're. I think we're there. Remove the sauce from the heat and stir in the remaining. Okay, let's, uh, okay. Remove the sauce from the heat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Okay, move that over there. Let me move the camera some more. Okay. And now, I uh, stir in the remaining butter and tarragon, and then I get to taste it and salt and pepper it. Okay, so here we go. Whoops. Okay. Kind of smash the butter over here. So there we go. There's the last. Okay, here's the butter. Here's the tarragon. I don't know how much of this you can see, but obviously the butter is melting. Tarragon. Remember when Leon taught me the phrase infused flavor? So we have the tarragon infusing its flavor into the sauce now. This smells amazing. Now, if it was me, I would put in more tarragon. But I was trying to stick to the script today. But if I decide to do another batch tomorrow for the finale, I might put in more tarragon. Okay, so, whew, all right, again, high stakes. The sauce, believe it or not, is completed. Um, now it says, now it says I'm supposed to taste it. So remove the sauce, stir in remaining, taste and season with salt and pepper. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this camera, so. Oh no, that's not. So here we go. Just gonna taste this. Mmm. Mmm. Definitely, definitely salty. Does not need more salt. Mm -mm -mm. Super tasty though. Okay. Wow. Let that tarragon infuse a little more. Ian said the demi gloss is super salty. Mm. Wow. I kind of feel like I might have thickened it a little bit too much. But maybe once all the, like, once I take the roasted meat out and you have the meat juices, I'll see that. You'll see that tomorrow. So, okay, in five minutes, the meat will actually be done. Um, so Marcia says, will the meat be medium rare when done? Yes, because I said it just to cook for 15 minutes, and that's what it said medium rare would take. Uh, Kathleen says, does it need less salt? It could be that I, ooh, that I put too much salt in the beginning, or it could just be that this demi-glace is super salty, and I cooked away too much of the wine. I mean, it's not too, too salty, but it's definitely on the very salty side. So yeah, Nancy says, yeah, I know its purpose is to make it salty, but I definitely would not add any more salt to this. I would though, go back to my Thrive Market pepper. Sure, sure, we're adding pepper here. And okay, now here's what you're 
and not going to see because when you take the meat out then you have to make a little tent of tin foil and you have to let it rest for 15 minutes is it 15 minutes yeah and then you um then you slice the meat on the diagonal and serve it with the wine sauce so all of that is going to be happening in tomorrow's episode so today um today we got through all the steps and I don't know about you, but I think that was pretty successful. Again, I have not tasted the meat, but Ian was right. Not hard. Not hard. Very limited cooking skills for something that he said people always think is super fancy. So I can see why. So, okay. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. And I do have one confession to make before we finish. Uh, I was laying in bed this morning, like my eyes were barely open. And all of a sudden I like popped up in bed like, I don't have any foil. It, it just, I don't know why all of a sudden I realized like, wait, I don't recall seeing any foil in my house lately. And sure enough, like I, I jumped out of bed, I ran into my kitchen, opened the drawer. I have things like parchment paper. Remember when I bought that? Yeah, you probably remember when I bought the parchment paper. I've got like, oh my God, I've got a thousand kinds of Ziploc bags, but no foil. So, um, you know my rule, one store, one shop, but I did break that rule this morning because the little foil tent seems super important for the resting of the meat. So Hooper and I nipped in. Uh, I have a little neighborhood grocery store. It's not normally where I shop, but it's a nice little local store where they just have like staples. So I nipped in uh, to the farm that's what it's called, the farm, nipped into the farm, got some foil. So a minor violation of the Liz Dolan current unpleasantness, only shop in one store a week rule. But I think the entire exercise was like two minutes and, you know, obviously safety. So Betsy wants to know, did I use unsalted butter? Well, you know, that's an excellent question because the recipe specifies unsalted butter. And I just used that Irish butter that I had. Hold, hold on one second, please. So, you know what? Betsy, you might be right. It could be, this doesn't say salted or unsalted. This just says Irish butter, but I'll bet the butter is salted. So that's a lot of salty things. If this is, who knows if Kerry Gold is salted? Well, I could read the label. <laughs> I'm assuming there's salt in here. I don't know. Well, let's see. Sodium, blah, 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 blah. cream, salt. Yes, Betsy. I, oops, I used salted butter. So that's something I can correct for tomorrow. I can definitely. I think I have some unsalted butter, but I just, I always default to either the Kerrygold or the Tillamook. Got your Oregon butter or your uh, your Irish butter. But um, okay, unsalted butter is going to be one. Oh, the roasted meat is done. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna let you see it come out of the oven then, but then it has to rest. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I need to find my other, my other oven mitt. My, as you may recall, my broken shade is still broken, in case you were wondering, and it's kind of in the way of my drawers opening and closing. But anyway, so I'm going to pull this out. Let's see. Mmm, 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 mmm. Whoa, okay. I'll hold this up for you. Check that out. That looks good. Super juicy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Of course, I don't know if it's cooked exactly right because it's like now I have to wait for 15 minutes. I put it under the tent and, uh, and let it rest. And then I'll know if I cooked it right. So, um, yeah, it's time to tent it, which I think I'm going to do 
Yeah, I think I'm going to do once we say goodbye because um, you'll see it again tomorrow because you'll see the end of the process and then service, as they say en France, there will be a service of the Chateaubriand with uh, some cheap Bordeaux. So yummy, yum, yum. Exactly, Mary. Um, did I, Jennifer wants to know, did I post the recipes already? Yes, if you go into the Facebook group, and if you just use the search function at the uh, at the top of the Facebook group, and you put in Cooking with Liz Holiday, or if you put in Chateaubriand, I, I've posted it like three or four times in the various threads, so it will come up. Um, so, okay, let's see, any more questions before I let you go? Uh, yeah, eyeballing. Okay. Um, <laughs> The uh, silver is unsalted. Oh, Natalie, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll see you back here at noon tomorrow um, for service, and you won't get to taste it, but I think uh, my Chateaubriand coach and satellite Mr. Ian Punnett is going to drop in tomorrow to review my performance. Uh, luckily for me, he won't get to taste it, but he can tell whether I did a good job or not. So I'll see you back here at noon tomorrow and uh and we'll have the finished dish so thank you everybody as you know here at kicking with liz it's all about peace and sauce <laughs>